This video discusses the key concept of DNA replication. In this video, we will revise the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication, the roles of helicase and DNA polymerase in DNA replication, as well as polymerase chain reaction or PCR in gel electrophoresis. DNA replication is the process by which a molecule of DNA replicates to produce two identical copies of DNA. This ensures the transmission of genetic information from one generation to the next and ensures growth and maintenance of genetic continuity within an organism. Every cell formed during growth or tissue replacement carries a complete and identical set of genetic information identical to the parent cell. Semi-conservative replication is the mechanism by which DNA replicates itself. The term semi-conservative refers to the fact that each newly synthesized DNA molecule contains one original or parental strand and one newly synthesized or daughter strand. We can see this in the diagram shown here. In molecules of DNA, the blue strand originates from the parental strand and the yellow strand is the daughter strand. We call this semi-conservative since some of the original DNA molecule is conserved. Now let's look at DNA replication in more detail. To initiate DNA replication, the enzyme helicase acts upon the intertwined DNA strands, unwinding them from their helical structure. As a result, helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs that stabilize the double helix, as shown in this diagram. Helicase continues in the five prime to three prime direction, breaking the hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs and unzipping the DNA strands. Once the strands are separated, they can be referred to as template strands because they are the templates against which the new strands will be formed. It is important to note that each new molecule of DNA which will be formed contains one strand from the original parent molecule. Subsequently, free nucleotides, each bearing one of the four nitrogenous bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, or thymine, align with their complementary bases on the separated template strands. This precise base pairing, illustrated in magnified view, facilitates the next step in the process. DNA polymerase join the nucleotides together to form the new strand by facilitating the condensation reaction, which links nucleotides together via a covalent bond forming the sugar phosphate backbone of the new strand. Note that this synthesis proceeds in a five prime to three prime direction, resulting in the simultaneous construction of the two new DNA strands in opposite orientations, as delineated in the diagram. Now let's see how we can use the principles of DNA replication in our own applications. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is a technique used to amplify sections of DNA. In other words, it's a technique employed to make many copies of specific segments of DNA. This technique proves invaluable in scenarios where a minute DNA sample, such as one recovered from a crime scene, necessitates amplification for comprehensive analysis. Consequently, PCR finds widespread application in areas like DNA profiling, forensic analysis, and paternity determination. DNA profiling, also referred to as DNA fingerprinting, offers a means to characterize a given DNA sample, further facilitating its utilization in forensic and paternity investigations. While PCR adheres to the foundational principles of DNA replication, it incorporates certain modifications to suit its specialized purpose. To break the two strands apart, instead of using DNA helicase as found in DNA replication, heat is applied to separate the strands. We call this stage denaturation. In the next stage, the heat is reduced so that primers and free nucleotides can form hydrogen bonds with complementary bases on both template strands. In the last stage, the heat is increased again and a heat-resistant form of the enzyme DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase builds the new strands. Note here that just like DNA replication, PCR is semi-conservative. Mastery of the distinct temperature-dependent stages in PCR is imperative for a comprehensive understanding of PCR. 
be sure to know these steps. Gel electrophoresis is a technique used to separate DNA fragments and has an important role in applications like DNA profiling or DNA fingerprinting, which can be used in paternity testing and forensic investigations. So let's say here we're using electrophoresis to produce a DNA fingerprint for individuals involved in a paternity dispute. In other words, we're trying to figure out who the parent of a child is. First, we would use the process of PCR discussed previously to amplify small samples of DNA. We would have a sample for the mother, one for the child, and one for each of the potential fathers. These samples undergo treatment with restriction enzymes, specialized enzymes designed to cleave DNA at specific sites, therefore producing DNA fragments. Given the inherent uniqueness of individual DNA profiles, the sizes of these fragments exhibit variability. However, a child's DNA will inherently contain fragments inherited from both parents. In gel electrophoresis, samples are placed in the wells indicated here. An electric current is then applied, causing the DNA fragments to migrate based on their size. DNA is negatively charged, so the fragments move towards the positively charged end shown here. The smaller DNA fragments migrate a greater distance in the gel. A DNA profile or fingerprint emerges, exemplified in the provided illustration, detailing the fragments for each individual and their relative sizes based on migration distances. We can compare the fragment patterns for each sample. Individuals which share a larger number of fragments are more likely to be related. A child inherits 50% of their genetics from their biological egg donor, the other 50% from their biological sperm donor. In these bands, we can see where child A has the same DNA sequences in common with their egg donor or mother. The other DNA the child has should come from the sperm donor or father. We can see that father number two has the unmatched bands in common with the child, making him almost certainly the sperm donor for child A. DNA profiling can be used in forensic investigations or crime scenes because we can use this method to match a DNA sample found at a crime scene to a potential subject. When we are matching an unknown sample to an individual, 100% of the bands found at the crime scene should match 100% of the suspect's bands. In this video, we revised these following key points. DNA replication is semi-conservative, where each new strand contains a parent strand and a daughter strand. The process of DNA replication begins when helicase unzips and unwinds DNA strands by breaking hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs. Next, DNA polymerase will build new strands by joining together free nucleotides in a five prime to three prime direction. Free nucleotides will arrange themselves according to base pairing rules and is a result of hydrogen bonding. We also saw how DNA replication can be used in technological applications, which many will begin with PCR as a technique used to amplify sections of DNA. PCR can be used to amplify DNA for DNA profiling, forensic investigation, and paternity testing. In these applications, restriction enzymes will be used to cut DNA into fragments, and those fragments can be prepared for analysis by using gel electrophoresis, which separates DNA fragments based on size.